Good morning. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading for the morning comes from Philippians chapter 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that it was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. And our Gospel reading from Matthew 21. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, and I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered, Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And the second son answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, friends. There are things that shape how we see and value ourselves. We all find a way to rank ourselves socially. Some give little or no credence to that activity, but they still have a gauge of where they are and where they are in comparison with the folks in their world. There's a character from literature that stands out for me who doesn't care, but goes along with it. It's Dolphus Raymond from the novel To Kill a Mockingbird. He walks around town with a brown paper bag, allowing everyone to believe that he was a raging alcoholic. When the heroes of the story, the kids, Scout and Dill, have a chance to talk with him, they learn that it is only a bottle of Coca-Cola. It's easier for people to believe that he is a raging drunk than that he prefers the company of African Americans. So he gives everyone a social fiction. While not caring about where he's ranked, he does know his place and plays along with the social fiction. Now most of us think of ourselves as normal, no matter how irregular we may be. Jeffrey Dahmer, the cannibal, probably saw himself as normal. 
but he knew that he had to hide and keep secret from others his disturb disturbing, murderous, and dysfunctional side. There was a line from last week's gospel reading that fits what I'm talking about so well. It sets up this week all, week's reading also. Don did a great job unpacking the parable of the vineyard where some were paid a full day's wage for a full day and some for the same uh, wage for just an hour's work. I was struck by their complaint. These last work only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. Now the all-day workers found it unfair that they had got something uh, that uh, the others had gotten something that they didn't get. But it was not just the money. What struck them hard was their own value. You have made them equal to us. That generosity of the landowner made them question their worth. They felt devalued from his choices to be generous. But in today's text. The value of the person is the foundational conversation of the matter. The Pharisees questioned Jesus' worth, his value to the nation, and showed their dismissal of him. Who are you to say and do these things? Or, to take it from today's slant in this sermon, Jesus, what are you worth? Now, instead of stating the answer to their question, Jesus brings up John the baptizer, Jesus' own cousin, who had just caused rumbles throughout the religious environs. By whose authority had John baptized? Now, the folks knew that if they said uh, that he had religious value, then they should have listened to him and followed him. If they said he had no value, the people who did value him would have been deeply upset. Like the workers in the vineyard, they did not want to be equal with John, nor with Jesus for that matter. So they chose to remain ignorant and said as much, we don't know. Now, the Pharisees in today's gospel found their value in their own identity, not in whose they were, but in who they were. It must remain unquestioned, and Jesus brought that question to them. What is your worth? Friends, we do it too. We often value ourselves on things we don't control, where we were born, the groups we belong to, as well as those we don't belong to. Jesus said to find value in how we obey, something that we can control. To make it simple, he puts forward a simple story to make a point, a parable. A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and the second son answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And of course, even the Pharisees knew it was the first. The value was in the one who obeyed, no matter what was said. The one who only said yes and did nothing had no value in this situation anyways. Everyone can see this clear and concise argument. It's clear and plain. But then Jesus throws down the gauntlet. Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. This was explosively scandalous, especially to the self-righteous Pharisees. Jesus was saying notorious sinners are more valued than you. Explosive is not a strong enough word. The Pharisees were put in a worse situation than the complainers in the vineyard parable from last week. It was not, you have made them equal to us. It was, you have made them, and the them needs to be dripping with contempt and scorn. You have made them better than us. Now, you should insert here ripping of garments and gnashing of teeth. It was bad. Jesus was schooling the Pharisees. It was not about being self-righteous, but in the right. And only God can bring us round right both back then and now. Friends, it is in humility that we come to God. It is in humility that we are saved. We have to trust not in who we are, but in whose we are. Not in what we know, but in who we believe. Not in what we say, but in how we live out our obedience to God. As Jesus said of his cousin John, for John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. 
but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Humility is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of ourselves less. We find our worth beyond ourselves and who we are in Christ. It's a hard thing to do, but thankfully Jesus, yes, Jesus did it first. In our Philippians reading, Paul quotes a hymn to Jesus saying as much. Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That ancient hymn, but it speaks to how we should be because Jesus is like that. Obedience, devoted, sacrificial obedience. This is where we find our value. It's in giving that we are valued. The world does not understand this. Celebrate me, celebrate me, celebrate me, the world cries out. Think of the TV shows where we just celebrate celebrity for celebrity's sake. Humble yourself and be obedient like Christ, and it will take the world's breath away. Grace, when given, cannot be ignored. Now, it might be dismissed, dishonored, rejected maybe, but not ignored. For in our heart of hearts, we still find it rare as much as we find it amazing. When asked what the greatest commandment was, we all mostly know what Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as much as yourself. We have to love neighbor, and we have to love God, and yes, we have to love self for that formula to work out. We love our neighbors, and we work for their good. We love God and obey God's commands. We love ourselves enough to do the hard work of becoming more and more like Christ each and every day. That type of hard work requires a strong and deep devotion. Is our neighbor worth it though? Am I worth it though? Is God worth it? Friends, how you answer that question is how you will shape the rest of your life. If they are not, if you are not, if none of this God stuff means anything, then we are wasting our time. But the story we tell is this. Each and every one of us, friend, neighbor, lover, or stranger, is made in the image of God. We are each and every one of us fearfully and wonderfully made by more than a craftsman, but by God. God's fingerprints are all over you and you and you and you and me. And God loved you enough to send Jesus to tell you this so that it was clear and abundantly clear. If there was any doubt in Jesus, we see that God loves you to death prophetically, metaphorically, and literally. And there is nothing you can do to keep God from loving you. And in the depths humanity sinks to at times, personally and collectively, we often need to be reminded of all of this and brought back into the fold. And when that happens, there is much rejoicing down here and up there because that's the point of all this. It always has been. And if you cannot find your worth in that, you're not trying. As we said in the prayer that we started with today, Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you today. Thank you for being with us. We hope to see you here at church soon. And if you can't join us here in person, please join us online. God bless you today. Have a great week.